So, good morning, Shabbat Shalom from Farakoy. A little bit freaked out this morning. My sister has these little vacuum robots roaming the house. Um, a little bit unnerving if you don't really, um, not expecting it, things like that. But we're okay. So, we all know that the Shabbos is Shabbos Nachmu. And what's what's the what's the what's the, what's the comfort? What's the what's the Nachmu? What's what, what's, what is it exactly? So I'm sure everyone heard from the past couple of days, yesterday, as far as Tishbav, as far as we feel the Churban, then you feel the Nachamu, you feel the, the comfort if you feel the Churban. If you don't feel the Churban, then the Shabbos is just going to Woodmere <laughs> and having pizza or something and things like that. So this really supposed to be a, a Nachama, and those people that really cry um, over the Churban realize that there is nechama, you know, because the house was destroyed, basement was destroyed, but we're, we're still here. And thousands of years, you know, it's, we all know it's a time, you can go through all the kinnis, talk about all the different places that there was a, you know, a horrible tragedy and massacre. And there's horrible things going on in Eretz Yisrael. And it, it hurts me to say this, that uh, I haven't said this too often in the past 19 years or 18 years or something, but... Uh, I'm almost happy not to be in Eretz Yisrael the past few weeks. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry to say this. It really it bothers me to say this, but uh, what's going on there? The the, the hatred and the, the protests and what's going on there, and there's no there's no middle ground. Unfortunately, um, it's it's just uh, it, it hurts. And uh, if you live here in America, yeah, you, know, you don't really hear too much. You don't care too much, which is good and bad. You know, you hear too many things. It makes you a little upsetting. But hopefully we have we have a nachama. Hopefully that's kind of what. Uh, so you don't have to really look too far, unfortunately, to have tsaras. There's anti-Semitic things that are taking place here in America. Um, so you don't have to really go back a thousand years, five hundred years, to massacres in New York and in Worms. You don't have to think about that. You can think about things that are taking place literally today in Eretz Yisrael even. Um, as far as nachama, so the question is, what 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 is the nachama? What 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 are we talking about? Then. Usually, Tisha B'Av rolls around and I get very upset because I, I feel it's a failure. You know, I, I feel every year that we're sitting on the floor in New York or Muncie or in Boise, Idaho, we're on the floor, and uh, it's a failure. You know, it's, it's it's a fail. Every year we don't get to, to a base of Mikdash. It's, it's a failure, I believe. And so, is there a Nechama? Is there a Nechama? How do we move on from here? And... I think we can kind of look in the Gemara. We know that uh, the story in Gittin rolls around, actually this year re- rolled around right during three weeks. As far as the things that cause the Chorban, small things. So the Gemara talks about that there's a Pasuk in Mishlei. A person should always be afraid. Afraid, nervous. So the Gemara says that it's really a person should kind of sweat out the small details, not look at the big things. You can't, you can't change the big things sometimes. Most times you can't. <laughs> the small things maybe have a chance. And those are the things that get you into trouble. So we all know bar, counter bar counter. That's one of the stories about the small things. Because it started with a small machlokas. You know, the host and maybe kamsa hated bar kamsa And so, sinaschinim, whatever it was. But either way... It leads to a lot of greater things. You, you piss off the wrong guy. <laughs> you upset the wrong guy. It can lead to big deals. So it's not just one person he upset. He upset somebody that really has a good tie-in to the government and caused the whole bit. Bring a carbon. It was it had a mum. He, so he caused all these things. Just one guy. You piss off the wrong guy. It can really upset the whole apple card. And the other story is with Betar. Hundreds of thousands of Jews are killed. Bodies are all over the place. Blood that's causing a river of blood. How did this start? It started with a tree. The Gemara says that the minute was a boy was born, they plant the tree. Fantastic. Girl was born, they plant the tree. Fantastic. That's all they have these things also. And then when they got married, they would use the wood from those trees and make the chuppah. Beautiful story. The problem was... As the Caesar's daughter was going through the area, and you know, Betar, you know, was really close to Shalim, the axle of the wheel of the wagon broke, and they cut the tree down. The Romans had no idea, you know, 
there was a revolt going on there, there wasn't a revolt. The Romans are going through the area, really not to make a fight, nothing, just the princess or the daughter was going through the area, cuts down, they cut down a tree to help fix the wheel, and they're about to move on. And the people saw this, they're freaking out. And this caused the Caesar's daughter to save the Caesar. There's a revolt going on there. And this literally leads to the massacre of Vatar. So again, horrible story, but something that's really small. New. So the guy gets married at some point, he'll have one tree. You know, the a smaller chuppah, they'll use cloth or something. So to kind of only, to kind of look at the big picture and not see the small little details, how they could lead to things that literally led to the Chorban, literally to the Chorban of Betar, all these people being, being destroyed. So the Chama, perhaps, is that even though, as we see that one small thing caused the Chorban, perhaps a small thing could cause the the building of the base of Megdash. So that's one takeaway, not looking at the big, look at the small things, even the small things can make a big deal. The other part is, to look at Shabbos. Svasemus talks about that Shabbos is really a Nechama, not just Shabbos Nachmu, but Shabbos is a great time to reflect on the week and have Nechama from the week. You know, the whole week we're traveling, stuck in Boise, <laughs> Minneapolis, planes delayed, we're stuck in Florida, we're stuck in places, working hard, things going on, things not going well, work, whatever it is, Shabbos is an oasis, Shabbos is Nechama, for everybody. So perhaps it's not just Shabbos Nachmu that is a is once a year in the Chama, but it's really each week. And perhaps if instead of looking at Tisha B'av and saying, boy, this was a disaster, we still have a Tisha B'av. we're not doing anything, are we succeeding in our lives? Uh, we should look at each, our, our personal Nechama. What did we do this week? Did we do anything small this week to either bring the base of Mikdash? maybe one step closer, one one brick in the wall, or at least on a personal level, did we have a little bit of nechama? Did we fix something, a Shabbos nechama from our, our personal lives? So this past week, I was actually on the way to, uh, I was on the way to uh, Boise, and a uh, guy next to me, big, big dude, he's about to, he pulls out his wallet, he's about to order a drink on the plane. And I said, I'm like, you know what? I got all these certificates, Delta, these vouchers, you know what? Boom. So I said to this guy, this may sound strange, but I'd like to buy you a drink. Now, you have to say this the right way because in a lot of situations, when you offer to buy a man a drink, it's it's taken that way. And I said to the guy, I hope this is not too crazy or too weird, but I have all these vouchers. I'd like to buy you a drink. And the guy's like, of course. Puts the wallet away. He buys himself a drink. Of course, I bought a drink because I'm not a guy. I can't let him drink alone. Now we're talking, oh, where you're from, going to work. So I got to really have a discussion about Eric Stroh. Oh, I live in Israel. You live in Israel, really? What's going on there? Oh, nice to meet you. Did a fist bump thing. And uh, it was nice, you know, again, really something that's not that big a deal. Just a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a gesture um, was a, a good thing for me. So that started off the week in a good way. So, and so this Shabbos, I can kind of go forward. I met another person at the airport. Had a nice word with her. Oh, Israel. I was in Israel. You can kind of strike up these conversations. I met this fellow, a Satmar guy, who was in the Mayo Clinic. He was in Rochester, Minnesota. Nice conversation. So little things. And hopefully the small things, the smaller things can lead up to something greater and a Nechama for everybody, meaning the Nechama for Beis Migdash and a real Shabbos Nachma. But until then, until then, hopefully we don't look at Tisha B'av as a, we look at it as a total disaster, but hopefully we can have lessons as we kind of prepare for Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. So if we kind of look at these small things, look in our lives, look at what the small things are. We know this parsha, Veshanan, Moshe is looking for the small mitzvot, setting up our niklat, small things, and that's kind of the takeaway. Look for the small things, worry about the small details, and hopefully we grab those and then we can move on to big things. Shabbat Shalom.